So, Ulduar. Bastion of the Titans and their Keepers. Ruined Orb. It's literally right there. And they drop. It's f***ing huge, this place. And it's even bigger than they can depict it in the game. Hey, look, it's the Lore Keeper of Norganon. Hey, what's up, dog? Oh, what's up, dog? How's it going, dog? I heard a story of or two of a Lore Keeper in Uldamon that fit your description. Do you serve a similar purpose? I was constructed to serve as a repository for essential information regarding this complex. My primary functions include communication, communicating the status of the frontal defense systems and assessing the status of the entity that this complex was built to imprison. Frontal defense systems? Is there something I shouldn't let Bran know about before anyone has before he has anyone attempt to enter the complex? Access to the interior of the complex is currently restricted. Primary defensive emplacements are active. Secondary systems are currently non-active. Can you detail the nature of these defense systems? Compromise of complex detected. Security override enabled. Query permitted. Primary defensive emplacements consist of iron constructs and storm beacons, which will generate additional constructs as necessary. Secondary systems consist of orbital defense placements. Orbital defense placements. Looks at a loon. <laughs> I understand that it's talking about those things over there. Or orbital. Hmm. Ridian, make sure you let Bran and Archmage Pentaurus know about those defenses immediately. And you mentioned an imprisoned entity. What is the nature of this entity and what is its status? Entity designate Yog Saron. Security has been compromised. Prison operation status unknown. Unable to contact watchers for notification purposes. Yog Saron is here. It sounds like we will have our hands full then. We really will have our hands full then. There you go. Activate secondary defense systems. So the secondary defense systems aren't active by default. That's fucking weird, by the way. Kind of a weird decision. That they didn't just kick on. And the defense systems come in the form of these pylons, the red, the green. I think there's a blue and a gold. Okay, let's move out. Get into your machines. I'll speak to you from here via the radio. <laughs> you have to, though? So I can just run by them? Okay. Rune forged sentry. And look at the runes all over them. They basically look like Titanic Order runes, not that far off from Domination. They're all rune-forged. Which I, I just think that's so interesting. Dark rune. Is that Antorus' brother, Pentaurus? <laughs> the Iron Dwarves have been seen emerging from the bunkers at the base of the pillar straight ahead of you. Destroy the bunkers, and they'll be forced to fall back. Mechanome battle tank. Hey, look, there's mechanomes. I mean, we knew about that. I guess I just forgot. It's been a long time since I've done Ulduar, actually. It's been a very long time. So you have red, green, blue, and yellow. And then white. Oh, no, those are just not powered up. I see. Crystals are normally white. Interesting. Interesting. I think for this you just have to pull these back too, and then I think Flame Levy comes through the door. Any DCs? Oh yeah, I've been DCing over and over. I had to log out of Battle.net and re-log in the, through Battle.net to, to get in. They, yeah, they've been getting beat off. Evasive action! Flame Leviathan. Hostile entities detected. Threat assessment protocol active. Primary target engaged. Time minus 30 seconds. I love how it uses fire. Of Alert. course. Static defense system failure. This massive Our armored tank guards the disabled. courtyard entrance in Ulduar. The watcher Mimiron's name is misspelled here. Mirmiron. It's, I'm pretty sure it's Mimiron. Constructed the Flame Leviathan as part of his Volt Voltron weapons platform. Isn't that same platform the weapons platform that's used Total by um, King Mechagon? Failure. Isn't it Voltron Weapons Platform? Breached. 
Leviathan unit shutting down. Sounds familiar. So it's a big clockwork tank. Okay, now we're all in here now. Can you imagine how epic it'll be to see a full render CGI cinematic in the Titans of Ulduar? Dude. I want to see the full CGI. I want to see them order Sargeras in full CGI, man. The inquiring minds just got to know. Great job with that metal monstrosity. There appears to only be a few more obstacles in our way. Once you clear out that clanking robot at the end of the hall, we'll be inside Ulduar. We also notice an enormous fire-breathing Proodrake and a molten giant. They aren't in our way, though, if you'd like to just avoid them. Keep your eyes on the horizon. Only a matter of time until we break back into Ulduar. Any luck finding a way to teleport inside? None at all. I suspect it has something to do with that giant mechanical construct that our scouts spotted at the front gate. Oi! So we'll have to contend with that thing after all then! Yes, we do. What about that plated Proto-Drake and the fire giant that were spotted nearby? Think your mages can handle those? The Kirin Tor can't possibly spare any additional resources to take on anything that size. We may not have to, though. We can sneak past them. As long as we can take down that construct in front of the gate, we should be able to get inside. Sneak! What do you think we are, marmots? We're sneaking. <laughs> We're hunting an old god, Bran. Fine. If our allies are gonna be the ones getting their hands dirty, we'll leave it to them to decide how to proceed. Do you think we'll be using Dalaran as a city for the last Titan again? Um, I think Dalaran's gonna fall out of the sky. You guys know whether it's the Lovecraftian mythos, and I think it's also in Forgotten Realms D&D that there's floating cities that, um, I'm pretty sure it's after the spell plague, literally fall out of the f***ing sky. When the veil, or when the, when the, uh, not the veil, what do they call it? When this, when the weave that like, comes undone, pretty sure their magical floating cities literally start falling out of the sky. So, yeah, no, I'm good. So here we have some forged constructs, forged with flame runes, or flame energy. Ignis the Furnace Master. Like the other Titan Forge creations in Oluar, Ignis now serves the twisted will of the old god yogg saron This imposing fire giant coils over the colossal forge, creating the iron armies that will conquer Azeroth in yogg saron's name. So here's the deal, chat. Remember what Loken was saying about how his master showed him the future and we have no place in it? He says, the war Azeroth shall be reborn in darkness. yogg saron shall be freed. The Pantheon shall fall. But again, the Pantheon has already fallen. Yogg-Saron is in... We are literally here to kill it and set it free. Your fate is sealed. The shadow of my corpse will haunt... Will choke the life from this land for all eternity. Whatever the f*** he says when we kill him. We know that they're not gone. Pawn of forces unseen. We know that. So, basically, what it sounds like to me is that Loken was actually trying to keep this all in check. And actually try to keep things contained. And right now, anyway, it kind of seems like it's working. But then we show up, of course, to undo the machinations of Loken. And subsequently set Yogg-Saron free. To reclaim this world. Insolent whelps, your blood will temper the weapons used to reclaim this world, is what he said. Love his cauldron belt buckle. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Big forge that comes out of a mountain. So yeah, there's a big f***ing volcano up here. Something that maybe people might not notice. It's kind of up there. I'm not going to fight the Drake because it's obnoxious and I don't want to. XT002 Deconstructor. He must have hung out with Cloud a lot. He likes to do squats, it seems. Cloud and Zack ad admirer. Engineered to patrol the Ulduar scrapyard, Mimiron invested his clockwork creation with a rudimentary intellect that suited his duties. XT002 has come to look upon himself as the Keeper's son and often throws tantrums like a petulant child. Yeah, because it is rudimentary intellect. It's the, well, it's kind of the intellect of a child. Like they said, that's why he throws a fit. Does he talk about playing?
Yeah, there's something about XT that's like extra searing light. It's literally hitting me for searing light. Like, hello? Why isn't it doing damage to me, though? Oh, it's because I'm too high level. It's missing. Well, that's cool. You are bad toys! Very bad! I remember when people thought XT had bad voice acting, but now everyone in Dragonflight sounds like him. <laughs> well, I'm the... Well, what you... You're a bad toy, Pyro? Well... That's why we're gonna make the guild the bad dragons. All right, chat, this is where it's gonna get crazy. This is where it revs up a little bit. So immediately if you look up more of that imagery of like the angelic children. And into the main chamber of Ulduar. The same artwork up on the roof. Rune etched, lightning charged, iron dwarf. And more of those images. But even more so, and I, I didn't used to have an interpretation to this. Could be the crooked serpent right there. There's a man wielding a hammer and a woman wielding a bow. I used to think Illyria and Turalyon. That's like a big mana worm looking thing. Could have something to do with Yasharaj. But the same type of visages born from celestial connections. Here's that same kind of greenish, bluish energy kind of flowing through this place. Maybe something someone said earlier, Serenite, you know? Maybe, dude. Maybe. Fucking maybe. I mean, shit. And then we get some more of these red pillars. Another common motif of the Titan architecture, as I pointed out earlier. Now we go over here towards the Assembly of Iron. The Iron Legions of Loken are commanded by three fearsome generals, each representing a different Titan-forged race. Stormcaller Brundir, Runemaster Mulgheim, and the Giant Steelbreaker fight in the name of the Keeper's true master, the malevolent Yog saron That's what it says. They use Rune of Power, which increases damage dealt. Let's see. Lots of pillars in this room. It's weird. <laughs> see, what, see what dialogue we get. Whether the world's greatest gnats or the world's greatest heroes, you're still only mortal. See, here's what doesn't make sense to me. If Yog saron gave the Curse of Flesh as a counter for the, for the Titan Forged, then what logic is there truly in him commanding Loken to make more Titan Forge that have voice lines that actively speak out against things like the Curse of Flesh, against mortality, against those things. So, so, so basically, I, I'm supposed to believe that Yog saron has literally control of all this shit, even though almost none of it actually seems to indicate that he does. Like, I understand that they did, they're not gonna, they're not giving away the whole thing. You rush headlong into the maw of madness. Like, what are what are we doing? We're told that Loken's lost his mind. You've defeated the Iron Council and unlocked the Archivum. Let's listen to the Archivum. I actually haven't listened to this in like years. So let's see what the Archivum has. This is just like the uh, Tribunal of Ages. There's another disc down there. And these, these rings, instead of gold, they're blue. How are you? Safe travels. The answers are here. I can feel it. There are secrets contained within these halls that are beyond our wildest dreams. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. 
console appears ancient, though there is no sign of dilapidation or decay. A single slot appears to fit large circular discs. So I don't think I can trigger this, so I'm going to look it up. So first dialogue with Bran Bronzebeard. Now this is what we call a nice find. Entry denied. Access level insufficient. Oh, hold on. Let me show myself. Access level insufficient. Brand's, Brand Bronzebeard says, I'll show you access, you wretched machine. Here it is again. Norganon's key. Access to the Archivum granted. Intrusion protection mechanisms suspended. Looks like all the other Titan archives me lads have found. Only older and bigger. Wait a second. This doesn't look right. Next to this blinking light. What's this Algalon signal? Initiating query. The Algalon failsafe is an automated emergency signal following a prime designate's demise. It's funny it says A because there's that's I'm assuming then that there's been more other prime designates on other worlds. But I know that Loken is the second prime designate. Um, Odin being the original, obviously. Prime designate? What have I heard that? What have I heard that before? By my grandfather's beard. Loken is Azeroth's prime designate. Loken's death triggered this. Affirmative. Timestamp of prime designate Loken's destruction coincides with signal activation. Well, who's on the listening side of the signal? What's going to happen? Searching. Destruction of prime designate is considered the first warning sign of systemic planetary failure. That's insane to think about. It's the first warning sign. That's insane. Let that sink in for a second. The death of their literal leader of their keepers is the first warning signal. Like what? What? The first warning of systemic planetary failure. Algalon Observer Entity's arrival is followed by planetary diagnosis, resulting in one of two possible reply signals. Reply, co reply code Alpha, signaling all is well, and reply code Omega, signaling planetary reorigination. Planetary reorigination? Speak plainly, you blasted machine! The decomposition of the planet and its living organisms into base elements. Metals, rocks, gases. This is followed by a period of reconstitution of each element into the original planetary blueprint. Hear that, lads? It's only the end of the world. Well, what are you waiting for, you rusty machine? Initiate reply called Alpha. All is well. Pints are on me. Request denied. Reply codes built into Algalon Observer Entity. He is both messenger and message. So we can alter the message by altering him. Hmm. Well, what's this Algalon going to be looking for with his diagnostics? What are our chances? Algalon diagnostics assess danger of systemic old god corruption in planetary vital functions. Calculating chance of Omega reply code. 99.99%. That's repeating, of course, which is obviously a, you know, Leroy Jenkins reference. 33.3% repeating, of course. Blast it, lads. Looks like we've got a fight ahead of us. New orders. Unlock the entry to the Celestial Planetarium. Request denied. Access requires manual verification of the four watchers' signals. Four watchers. Signals. Sigils, pardon me. Sigils! Could you be a little less cryptic, confounded machine? Wait. How do we get the sigils from them, then? Just walk up to them and ask them nicely! Analyzing Watcher status, please wait. Corruption found. External influence gaining control over Watchers. Sigils compromised. Well, that's what they claim. You're gonna tell us how to uncompromise the sigils, aren't you? Sufficient use of force would trigger a reset in Watcher functions. <laughs> Removing the external influence. 
As for not endangering the sigils during this process, I can analyze each Watcher's status and make that information available to you upon completion of calculations. I've dreamed of roaming the halls of the Titans for years. I never thought I'd be pitted against their creations. Keeper analysis. Watcher analysis. Freya. Commencing Watcher Freya status analysis. Watcher powers augmented by presence of Elder Servants, which is talking about the trees in there. Analyzing Elder Brightleaf Enhancement. Persistent area defenses powered by solar amplification. Elder Stonebark analyzes, analysis reveals a sonic defense that disrupts the use of magic. And Iron Branch scans have uncovered plant-based immobilization mechanisms. <laughs> Yikes. In addition, my analysis links each elder to an increase in Freya's spellcasting, physical, or summoning capabilities. In other words, kill them or it's hard mode. Destruction of Elder Servants will result in loss of en enhancements of Watcher Freya. So, Freya uses trees to empower herself. Permanent damage to Freya's person and possessions, including her Watcher Sigil, is highly probable. Huh. Hodir, commencing Watcher Hodir status analysis. Hodir's sigil appears to be located inside a cache of artifacts. Watcher Hodir's temperament and behavior, highly unstable. Destruction of cache, cache highly probable during prolonged combat. So you have to finish it quickly, otherwise, yeah, yeah. The, the frozen chest melts or whatever. Allies present in the field of battle are likely to provide synergies and minimize combat duration. Preservation of cache is essential to recovering Hodir's sigil. Commencement, Watcher Mimiron status analysis. Watcher Mimiron sigil is linked to a self-destruct mechanism connected to the entirety of the corridors of ingenuity. Talk about a fail-safe, holy frick. Trigger for self-destruct mechanism is codenamed Big Red Button. <laughs> Mimiron's own creation. To retrieve Mimiron's sigil, initiate self-destruct sequence and defeat Mimiron before its completion. Back to reset button, yeah. And then Thorim. Commencing Watcher Thorim status analysis. An external influence under illusory guise of Thorim's deceased mate, Sif, has been detected. So after Loken killed Sif and disposed of her body, yogg saron used Sif's image to basically reanimate its to animate itself and to heavily manipulate Thorim. Um, mental interference from this presence dangerously close to triggering partial memory damage. Mental interference on Thorim from yogg saron is dangerously close to triggering partial memory damage. Interesting. Tactical analysis suggests approaching the arena from the front and splitting secondary force through a side passage. This used to be so annoying to do, dude. Oh my god. Oh, fighting Thorim was so obnoxious back in the day. Tactical analysis suggests this. This will maximize odds of reaching Thorim's outlook before mental domination. Before mental domination. <laughs> what? Before mental domination by external presence is complete. <sighs> Okay? Okay? I am the... Monster in your nightmares, the fiend of a thousand faces. All the different guises that the Primus takes on. There's no shot. There's no shot. Okay, let's go fight Algalon. Well, we can't fight Algalon. Let's go fight the others. Is Yogg really dead? No. None of the old gods are really dead. We only fight a portion of him. No, no, that's not true. That is such... Okay, let me allow me to aid you with something. That's fanfic made up bullshit. That is fanfic made up bullshit. That's not real. Fans literally made that up. That's not real. How many times have the devs come out and said that we fought and killed the old gods? It has been half a dozen times now that they've said it. The whole idea of pushing them back into their prisons is not correct. Not correct. That's not true. Fans came up with that. That's ca that's headcanon. Okay? I just want to clarify that. I, I used to have a video. I had a video saying we are not pushing them back into their prisons. When you kill something, it goes to its afterlife, doesn't it? That's what's supposed to happen. So if we show up and kill the old gods, what do we suppose happened to them? They probably are going to their afterlife. It was clearly stated at BlizzCon that they're all dead. Yes, but death is only part of a cycle. It's only part of a cycle. So, 
the idea that we only fought a, fought, fought a small part of them or a, uh, that they got pushed back to their prison is literally not correct. Like they are, they're still, it's like, think about this. Did we kill uh, Garrosh? Yes. Guess who we found in the Shadowlands? Garrosh. You know what I'm saying? So the point that I'm trying to make really is that like, death isn't the end, it never has been. And so people need to like, realize that the old gods are the same way. The Shattered Walkway. Presumably shattered by Kolagarn to seal off access to the main area here. Kolagarn's an interesting looking fella. Let's read about him. Loken commands Ignis the Furnace Master to fashion his towering giant to guard the Shattered Walkway. This towering giant. So this is, once again, fashioned through the same means. Hmm. His massive arms allow Kolagarn to pulverize any intruders attempting to reach the Inner Sanctum. Master See ya. Go. <laughs> See ya. Sealed behind doors of light, once again. It's so metal that we use his body as the bridge. <laughs> hey, time to fight the crazy cat lady. Imagine Ulduar 2.0 raid in the last Titan. Yeah, we probably won't be fighting their keepers. We'll be fighting the Titans. So here again, we have the Torin and a Night Elf. Huge beam of energy that is God knows what. Same angelic motifs on the ceiling. Shattered glass for the prison. And the prison below with almost like an ethereal kind of glow to it. Lightning kind of arcing between it. That looks like the shattered glass from Shadowland Sky. Sure kind of does, doesn't it? Storm tempered keepers. Get him out of here. We gotta go fight Hodir. He is flash frozen. All of these guys, so they're all alive, but they're basically being held in ice stasis. You guys see that here? Hodir has basically put our homies in stasis. He's literally put them on ice. So. It's like what happened to Odin, kind of. It's kind of what happened to Odin. Let's fight Hodir. He's apparently very unstable. Oh, he has white eyes. Okay, okay, so I take it back. He's scary looking though. Hodir reminds me like, the skull on his belt and shit's kind of scourgy, isn't it? Spike shoulder pad. He reminds me a lot of Norganon actually, which I don't really like. This is supposedly one of Golganeth's keepers. You will suffer for this trespass. Ow. Fighting cold. We beat them up, but we don't kill them. Remember, we just beat them up. I, I am released from his grasp. At last. So this sounds like pretty flat out like mind control. And given Yog Saron's connections with um given Yog Saron's connections with Maldraxxus and potentially the Primus as a result, it really worries me that Yog Saron exhibits these capabilities. But it was always to me, I always kind of interpreted it as like madness. That it was insanity that he was using, but what we just bit we just beat the insanity out of Hodir? That doesn't make any sense. Time for Thorim. Interlopers, you mortals who dare to interfere with my sport will pay. Wait, I remember you in the mountains, but you, what is this? Thorim, Where my lord, why else would these invaders have come into your sanctum but to slay you? They must be stopped. So, and that's Yog saron speaking to Thorim as Sif. That's not really Sif. But she's, yeah, she's definitely touch of dominion. Subjugated to the will of Yog saron Are you fucking serious? They just straight up do that. Why don't you just call it domination? Touch of dominion. Is Sif the only time we actually see Yog influence on a Titan Keeper and all the others are just mind controlled? Sif is an illusion. 
Sif is quite literally an illusion. Um, you know, one of the thousand faces, the fiend of a thousand faces, right? So Sif is, is flat out an illusion. It's the Titan Kaz, you think? Ancient Runic Guardian fortifies nearby allies with Runic Might. Ah. These pathetic mortals are harmless beneath my station. Dispose of them! So Sif hits him against us. Deafening thunder. And then look at that, by the way. Impertinent whelps! You dare challenge me atop my pedestal? I will crush you myself! It's a storm giant fighting a dragon. <laughs> Thorim! <laughs> oh, Thorim! <laughs> you goofy goober! <laughs> This f***ing shit gets me, dude. These f***ing weird janky fights get me. I I knew you weren't supposed to come in here. Paralytic field. You're paralyzed. Watch your step. Thorm looms at the end of the corridor, almost close enough to touch. Assuming you weren't paralyzed, of course. But you are. What a shame. <laughs> dude, <laughs> these debuffs. That's f***ing hilarious. So Sif was Thorim's Titanforged lover. So Sif was Thorim's wife, and when Loken killed Sif and betrayed them, that really led to the downfall of the of the keepers of, of Ulduar. And uh, so yeah, that what you're seeing is the fruits of Loken's labor. Interesting, so, look at the runes on his hammer. This one right here, this three, this sideways three, those really remind me of domination runes. They're like Titanic, yes, but they really remind me of domination runes. Around an orb, too? Yeah. This three? Oh, I don't like those, bro. Thorim! I think I broke your fight, Thorim. I will crush you myself. Oh, crush me, big thunder daddy. Stay your arms. I yield. <laughs> I feel as though I am awakening from a nightmare. But the shadows in this place yet linger. Sif. Was Sif here? Impossible. She died at my brother's hand. A dark nightmare indeed. I need time to reflect. I will aid your cause if you should require it. I owe you at least that much. Farewell. Uh huh. Ashe of Storms. And wraps of Resonance. Belt of the Betrayed. Let's go in here. Now, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe besides Norganon and the Spark of Imagination over here, Freya easily has the largest section of Ulduar. It's fucking huge. It's outside, but it's absolutely fucking huge, and it's just teeming with life. Some life similar to what we found in Elunaria, actually. Oh, cat lady, right. Ulduar's archivist patrols the observation ring accompanied by ferocious cats. Years of solitude have weighed on Aria... Uh, Aurea? Aria? Aria? And the old god's growing power seems to have destroyed the last shreds of her sanity. So she's quite literally the crazy cat lady. Nice. Pretty sure you get the achievement if you just like kill her. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's also just like tropical life existing on snowy mountain peaks. So when we talk about Aenar and Freya and what they've done as kind of unnatural and um a little sus? Yeah, none of this should be here. This is, look, we're in Xerath Mortis again. Check it out.
Guardian of Life. Emerald Dragons here. The Elders, which empower Freya using trees. It's fucking Lich Bloom over there, but probably just because of the expansion. So you have green for like life and growth, yellow for, I would assume, light and preservation, and purple, the arcane and the shadow, blue, bright leaf. Interesting that bright leaf is the one over there. Freya just walking around, doing whatever she wants, doing Freya things, going in the water, doing Freya things. What are you even doing? Oh, she just patrols. Freya, the only keeper who has been pretty much completely absent since Ulduar. You guys know that? Freya's the most uh, absent of them all. That's convenient. The Watcher, just like Aenar, who didn't get captured by the Legion. <laughs> the Watcher Freya served as protector of all living things, aided by three Stoic Elders. Through her conservatory, though her conservatory remains lush and verdant, she too has succumbed to the old god's maddening whispers. That's just like so weird, bro. But she's gonna use Lifebinder's Heal, Conservator's Grip, Lightning Lash, Detonate. She's gonna use a bunch of abilities. Touch of Aenar heals Freya. Like what? Sunbeam. Like what? Let's fight her. Elders, grant me your strength. Damn, that was close. Children, assist me. Children. Ancient water spirit. Bright Leaf's Essence, Stone Bark, Iron Branch, Attune to Nature, Touch of ANR. A Lifebinder's Gift begins to grow. ANR's Gift. Eonar, your servant requires aid. Is, are we supposed to be saying Eonar? Is that how it's actually said? Like. Sunbeam. She's dropping sunbeams on me, dude. There's even stuff in the Freya fight that connects them to the sun. Look at the vines on her legs, that's pretty cool. Alright, it's time for you to die. Well, His hold on me dissipates. Get smacked up. I man. can see clearly once more. Mm-hmm. Thank you, heroes. Even though she's made of stone, she has vines all over her body. I oh, I like seeing the little leaves come off of it. Look at that. Some of these trees and fruits and stuff. So interesting, dude. Some of them really remind me of stuff on Drenor. And you have this little... I don't even know what that is. What is that, like a little dream portal? What is that? Hey, to Mimiron. This is where things get... Very clockworky and logical and mechanical and cold and calculating. And uh, yeah. I'm very, very sus of Norganon, the Titan. These appear to be many of the wheels, cogs, and gears used in their machines throughout Ulduar and Storm Peaks. How's that for a big fing arcane rune? Look at this. Whatever this energy is, Mimiron has very clearly figured out how to utilize it. Kind of reminds me of uh, Maldraxxus Anima. Or maybe even like spirit energy, like life spirit energy. Watch they like imprison Yogg-Saron, sapped all the life and spirit out of him and that's why it's like a terrible abomination now. Use it to fuel their machinations. I mean, isn't that what we think they did with Azeroth? So, like, why not? The music here is scary. The 
And this will kind of give you an idea of just how big this section is. Machinery is fucking insane. So much, dude. How do you even build this? It's so massive, dude. Like, what the fuck? How do you even build it? What the fuck is this even? <laughs> do not push this button. Mimiron. A brilliant innovator. Mimiron has crafted countless mechanisms throughout the history of Azeroth that have inspired awe and wonder. Since falling under Loken's disturbed influence, the Watcher of Ulduar has only constructed machines of war and destruction. This freaks me out, dude. It is such a massive machine. Are any of those runes domination? Are any of them blue? If not, then they're not domination runes. The ones on the seat of the Pantheon are blue, and they look really similar to these. These ones just aren't colored. So they could be. But order and domination may be very similar and not identical. So this remember that. Hmm. Part of me almost wonders that that's a little bit of a fractal for the Algalon situation. Why would you press the big red button? How are we supposed to can finish testing with self-destruction imminent? We're gonna re-originate this wow, bitch. Wonderful! Positively marvelous results! Hull integrity is 98.9%! Barely in debt! Moving right along! It's a can opener! Yo, I've done this raid so many times and I just realized it's a massive can opener! <laughs> Yo, I didn't realize what it is. It's a fucking can opener. <laughs> self -destruct in nine Holy shit. I didn't realize it until just now. Behold, the VX-001 anti-personnel assault cannon. You might want to take cover. He has canned ideas. And this guy's under the control of Yog saron Like, I, I, it's so weird to me. Like, it's such a subtle influence. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? I call it the magnificent aerial command unit. So Mimiron didn't just get bored and start making f***ing weapons? Like, come on. This area will self-destruct in eight. Preliminary minutes. testing phase complete. Now comes the true test. <laughs> just laugh, dude. Gaze upon its magnificence! Bask in its glorious... Um... Glory! I present you with... The O7 TR Self-destruct sequence terminated. Override code A905. Oh, it would nine, appear two. that I made a slight miscalculation. I allowed my mind to be corrupted by that fiend in the prison, overriding my primary directive. All systems seem to be functional now. Clear. Is Yogg's? No. Sometimes I just have like, you know, random thoughts all the time that happens. I'm just sitting here thinking, could the corruption of Yogg Saron to the Keepers be a little bit of a microcosm for the idea of Azeroth kind of corrupting the Titans. And corruption is such a... It's a word. It's a word. Hmm. I sure hope Azeroth is what I think it is. I sure hope. 
Like, they were hearing Azeroth this whole time, and Azeroth is an old god imprisoned by the Titans? Well, I'm not saying they were hearing Azeroth the whole time. No, I'm saying yogg saron is a microcosm. It's a fractal. It rhymes. It's similar. It's not the same. Let's go back to... Shattered Walkway. So now I have them all gathered. You know, why does Freya go stand over there? That's kind of weird. I guess just because there's not a spot. That's kind of weird. I guess I was kind of expecting her to be over there. I guess I forgot, but this is where the little things are. So this next part's like probably the craziest part of Ulduar. Um, so here we go. And look at what's on the fucking walls, dude. We're gonna talk about all these in a second. So, um, that's Poseidon, basically. And he also reminds me a lot of Yasharaj, actually. Um, so we'll start there. For pretty obvious reasons, he reminds me of Yashiraj. The two big horn things on the head. The, the way his hands are kind of coming together to clutch this thing. The serpentine looking body. Kind of the crown on the head. Also in the season, uh, in the Wrath Classic thing. Let me show you something. I've pointed out when it comes to like Azeroth before, how sometimes overlaying um, visual imagery during transitions is a way to hint that things are related to one another. So you see how this, they literally have this transition. I don't think that's an accident. You feel me? The old gods probably did not look like what they do now. They probably looked more like that guy. Um, so, yeah, that's not an accident. That's Yasharaj. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So, that's right at the start of their trailer. So, these things being depicted on the walls are not accidental, in my opinion. They do represent things. And for all we know, they could be old gods and or their partners, consorts. For all we fucking know, that right there is the Poseidon that we've been missing and that we've been looking for. As far as that goes, blue-haired, golden-skinned serpent woman. Hmm, the twin babies. Yeah, you like that one? Yeah, how about that one? The twin babies. Yeah, how about that? And they're in a green tapestry. Hmm. Hmm. Golden twins. And they have little fish bodies. To be a little Malfurion? Go back to about 10 seconds before the end. Does, does Azeroth or something appear in Yogg's mouth? Yeah, it kind of overlays that at the end there. Yeah, you caught that? The tadpole baby things are weird, aren't they? They look like humans, though, in the face. Blue-haired, gold-skinned lady. Hmm. Could be Azeroth, for all we know. Maybe the two old rulers or something. Could be, be Zalatath. Fuck if I know. That right there, though. <laughs> the descent into madness. What about that one, though? What about that one? Tadpole babies made me think of Anshe and Musha. I can see that. Almost looks like someone in a straight jacket made of shadow. Yeah, it definitely looks like some kind of prison to me. It's got to be Zaltath now, right? Could be Zal. Could be a could that could represent Azeroth.
So I kind of like to think that these memories are like pertain to the old gods in some fashion. There you have Serenite bubbling out of the floor. Another broken image of the lady with another one of them. So in order to get through here, do you have to literally... I mean, look at all the Serenite. It's all built into it. Was this all sealed off? Were they literally breaking through defacing panels of memories to get down here? This is all very much torn the fuck up. This looks more like collapsed over time. Y yeah, I'm not saying it's not collapsed over time. What I'm trying to get to is that like where, I'm not sure if there is a, um, if there is a naturally open path or if it was something that was more sealed off. It's a prison after all, so. Ah, uh, here they are. So there's one. There's two. There's three. Interesting art over here. These are, so this one and this one are the same. Pretty sure. That one's broken by Serenite. This one's broken by Serenite. Symbolism in breaking windows. The crystals beneath are interesting. Yeah. The purple one with the green. I've always interpreted... Hi, Olive. I've always interpreted these as being the old gods. And the fact that there's supposedly five of them, and we have one, two, three, at least four with that, five different unique pieces of art, if we count the... I mean, look at the one from the shattered ceiling. The one in the ceiling, I'm pretty sure, is the guy holding the trident. No, no, it isn't. It's the woman, the golden blue woman, which is probably Azeroth, let's be honest. So the big one in the ceiling is the is the golden blue woman that's shattered. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You can see kind of broken remnants of them. Here's another one. Gold skin, blue hair. Why would they have stained glass of them? Purple one looks a lot like Yasharaj. Oh, yeah. I mean, Yasharaj is purple and green, so... Didn't the video show the window changing? Yes, it was uh, from the uh, from the blue um, from the Poseidon looking guy to that one over there. pain with just the tentacles visible could represent Nazoth. They wanted him to be secret. True, and it also kind of looks like it's underwater or something. So I could maybe see it that way. Nazoth does have red eyes, though. So the one that has red eyes, you know. That one with the big blue eye like that. that now that's interesting. Now that one kind of looks like the colors of Yogg-Saron, right? 
Maybe the one with a single eye and the big single eye in the middle of its forehead is supposed to be Cthune. One eye Cthune and kind of brown. Yeah, Yasharaj, Cthune. Maybe that's Nazoth. I mean, doesn't the red eyed. I mean, that kind of makes me think Nazoth. Faceless horror. Yog Saran. Maybe these aren't old gods at all, but the Void Lords they worship? Yeah, I kind of don't agree with that, personally. Nope, not gonna go there with it. I think these are pretty blatantly the old gods, personally. Poseidon Ocean God. Seems like that would pair up best with Nazoth. That's kind of what I was thinking, God of the Deep. You know, scientists theorize that life and its uh, simplest forms arose in the deep ocean around heat vents. Something to think about. General Vezax, you big bitch. Strange creatures known as faceless ones lurk in the depths of Ulduar. One of their mightiest commanders, General Vezax, guards the twisted passages leading to the prison of Yog saran for the record, guys, if I could clarify something for you, this shit isn't built by fucking old gods or void lords or fucking faceless ones. This is literally clearly built by the titans and their keepers. So the whole concept of like, oh, the void lords that they worship or whatever, like this is literally by the, the titans and the keepers made these, not the old gods. Like this is a titan facility, don't forget that. With Serenite all over the ceiling, so that's not helping. <laughs> Shut up, Bezax! Are the broken Yogg pictures symbolizing the Yogg prison breaking? Perhaps. Perhaps. That really makes me think Zalatath now. Because it, it looks... To me, it kind of looks... It's hard to tell. <coughs> to me, it looks more feminine, personally. Maybe Zal. I like that. Stained glass... Certainly is an interesting thing for it. Almost speaks to how light shining through the dark. And then we finally make our way to the actual prison, which I'm just, it's weird. The prison door is literally like built into Serenite. I understand that like he's bleeding and shit or whatever, but like kind of weird, dude. As we get down here, we are now in the prison with broken chains. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that we do a, a scenario where we go back and I want to say we recognize that something has like artificially um artificially uh enhanced the rate at which the prison fell apart these are the same chains that were used to imprison Yog Saron and guys think about it just think about this they're using ghostly blue chains to imprison things. The chains were weakened by a time traveler, right? Okay, that's what it was. It's the time walk in Ulduar dialogue. That's what I thought, that's what I thought. They're using blue ethereal chains, bro. If that doesn't make you think of control and domination, then I don't know what will. So, same chains as Nazoth at the end of the raid, yep. So that's actually Sarah. Wait a second. Yeah, Sarah now. <laughs> the time to strike at the head of the beast will soon be upon us. Focus your anger and hatred on his minions. Okay, Yogg Saron, I can do that. Thanks for telling. Let hatred and rage guide your blows. Thanks for telling me how to defeat you. Let hatred and rage guide your blows. If hatred and rage guide your blows. Maybe that's the key to killing it. Also, Serenite in here is interesting. A lot yes, more blue yes. and green. Show them no 
mercy! Give no pause to your attacks! Allow the fury to consume you. Yog saron the, uh, the lucid dream, the monster in your nightmares, the fiend of a thousand faces, all must bend to the master's will. Your petty quarrels only make Let him stronger. Let hatred and rage guide your blows! Ominous cloud begins to boil upon touching Pyromancer. Yes, yes! Show them no mercy! Give no pause to your attacks! Let hatred and rage guide your blows! There's even like little bits of what looks to be Serenite in the walls. How fucked up would it be? They construct the entirety of Ulduar out of his blood. Build the world out of its blood. I mean, that's a very common theme yes, in uh, mythology. Yes, show them no mercy. Give no pause to your attacks. Kind of blue and green reminds you of the world soul of Argus. I mean, look at where Argus is standing in his uh, in his yes, Hearthstone yes. art. Show them no mercy. Where do you think Give that is? To your attacks. Look upon the true face of death, and know that your end comes soon. I am. Lucid dream, the monster in your nightmares, the fiend of a thousand faces. Cower before my true form. Bow down before the god of death. And look at what's. Wait, Sarah is a Valkyrie. This will consume you. Sarah's a Valkyrie. Death Tremble Ray. Mortals before the coming of the end. Um. Interesting. Curse of Doom. Diminished power. Apathy. Shadowy Barrier. Black Plague, Psychosis. Tremble, mortals, before the coming of the end. Madness will consume you! Bad news, sire. The clans are united under Black Hand in this assault. They will stand together until Storm. Assassination of fall. King Lane Rin by Garona Halforken. Gul'dan is bringing up his warlocks by nightfall. Until then, the Black Rock Clan will be trying to take the Eastern Wall. A thousand deaths. Tremble, mortals, before the coming of the end. We will hold until the reinforcements come. As long as men with stout hearts are manning the walls and the throne, Stormwind will hold. The Orc leaders agree with your assessment. Your petty quarrel. Destroy them, minions! Your master commands it! Your petty quarrels only make me stronger. Gul'dan is bringing up his warlocks by nightfall. Until then... 
The Black Rock Clan will be trying to take the Eastern Wall. A thousand deaths. We will hold until the reinforcements come. As long as men with stout hearts are manning the walls and the throne, storm. Look upon the true face of death, and know that your end comes soon. I agree with your assessment. Your fate is sealed. Only the end of days is finally upon you, and all who inhabit this miserable little seedling. Ului Bisara Gagarong Wish! There you go. Your fate is sealed. The end of days is finally upon you, and all who inhabit this miserable little seedling. And that's Olduar. God damn. Oh yeah, we have to do Algalon. Yeah, yeah, good point. All right. So, what the Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning, rather, do not show you is the rest of the planets. There was four in the Halls of Lightning, if you recall correctly. Here, there are more. In this room, we have... Could be Kazgaroth or Agrimar. I also like the idea that maybe that's Agrimar. Norganon and Amonthul at the end. Amonthul at the end. Aonar. This red and blue one here is interesting. That one... That one interests me. Could be Golganeth. Amonthul, Aenar. Could be Golganeth. Norganon. Agrimar. Asgoroth. Azeroth. There's one missing. I think that's Drenor. Only one is a landmass in the ocean besides our world. I think that's Drenor. Okay, and how do you substantiate that? Because it doesn't look like Drenor. I think it's more likely to be Elunaria than Drenor, personally. Um, but Drenor could be A&R's planet, so I'm not even opposed to that. Fuck it. Um, the red and blue Argus. Guys, remember that this, the Pantheon didn't... We didn't know about... Ar okay. You have to look at this with the context of what we knew at the time, chat. Because it's when it came out. There was no Argus. We didn't know about it. We didn't know about any Argus. We know about we know about the Titan Pantheon. Okay? Amonthul, Aenar, Golganeth, Norganon, Agrimar, Asgaroth, Azeroth. Okay? But one of them is missing. One of them is missing. And the only place in the entire game where you can see the one that's missing is in Karazhan. And it's bright red. Sargeras is the missing one. That is correct. That is correct. Only the red planet is missing, and that's Sargeras. So, if these worlds really exist, haha, <laughs> what do you think the likeliness after the, the last Titan is that we end up going and visiting some of these worlds? I would say it's extremely high. Karazhan is the next lore tour, that is correct. That is actually correct, because I want to show you the, 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 uh, the library again. This one, I am almost certain, though, is Amonthul. Very interesting, that one. It might not be, though. Amonthul could be that one. The thing is, these ones that have these, this blue shroud around them is... Hmm, it were, it almost makes me think that they're, like, ordered or bound in a way, and the only, there's only two that don't have that, which are these two. I could have the, I could have the read wrong on that, that could be something else, but the one at the end of the hall, I kind of, kind of feeling like Amonthul. That one is so interesting, the red and the blue. Of course I've thought Argus before, when I see, like, Argus is, is blue, and then he turns black and red, so, like, yeah, yeah, when, I've, when I saw this, I, I have thought Argus before, but it just, I don't think it makes sense given the context of the Titan Pantheon. I think these are definitely more likely to correspond to the Titans than they are to, well, the known Titans than it is, um, you know, than what we, you know, the Titan Pantheon.
Can't wait to visit those planets. Assuming a Titan hatching doesn't literally rip the planet apart like an eggshell. Did it do that to Argus? No. It didn't. The world was sundered by something else. So I don't really subscribe to the idea that the whole world has to be absolutely obliterated with the awakening of a Titan. I think that we're I think that we're meant to believe that because I think we're supposed to be afraid of it. That's what I think. I think the Titans intended to make us afraid of the the concept of Azeroth waking up and uh and everything we is it, lads. pretty much we been got said here in that form. Algalon's arrival. Maybe we can rig the systems to interfere with his analysis. Translocation complete. Commencing planetary analysis of Azeroth. Stand back, mortals. I'm not here to fight you. Argus never reached full Titan size. What the fuck are you it talking about, bro? Do you remember the fight? To reoriginate this planet, should my analysis find systemic let's, corruption. Let's not argue while we're trying do to do this lore shit, huh? I'd prefer we don't. I don't really want to argue with you about Argus. I'll head back to the archivum and see if I can jam his signal. I might be able to buy us some time while you take care of him. Your actions are illogical. All possible results for this encounter have been calculated. The Pantheon will receive the Observer's message regardless of outcome. Hmm. See your world through my eyes. A universe so vast as to be immeasurable. Incomprehensible even to your greatest minds. Hmm. It's like Anche and Musha and the Blue Child over there. Ooh, look at that. That's what I think looks a lot like the Emerald Dream. The stars come to my aid. Rings. One ring. Two ring. Three rings. There's three rings around this platform. Two very large ones. One skinnier, one made of light. Phase punch. You're fading from this plane of existence. Damn right we are. Collapsing star. Hmm. We like that. Black hole. Dark matter. That'll phase the fight because I'm solo, so it'll reset the fight. And it's interesting because through the lens of his eyes, these celestial bodies are all on the outside. Do you guys notice that? The stars come to the my The sun, aid. the moons, that thing, they're all outside the stars. They're all outside the barrier. Behold the tools of creation. I have seen worlds bathed in the Maker's flames, their denizens fading without so much as a whimper. Entire planetary systems born and raised in the time that it takes your mortal hearts to beat once. Yet all throughout, my own heart devoid of emotion, of empathy. I have felt Nothing. A million, million lives wasted. Had they all held within them your tenacity? Had they all loved life as you do? Perhaps it is your imperfection, that which grants you free will, that allows you to persevere against all cosmically calculated odds. Mm -hmm. You prevail where the Titan's own perfect creations have failed. I've rearranged the reply code. Your planet will be spared. I cannot be certain of my own calculations anymore. I lack the strength to transmit the signal. You must hurry. Find a place of power close to the skies. I know just the place. Will you be all right? Citizens of Dalaran! Raise your eyes to the sky, and behold! <laughs> Do not worry about my fate, Bronzen. If the signal is not transmitted in time, reorigination will proceed regardless. Save 
your world. The Titans put the re in reorigination. <laughs> and that's actually not a joke, but it could be one. Look, it's our cosmos in a box. Gift of the Observer. Check it out. Now that is Ulduar. <laughs> Algalon the Observer, really capping it off, kind of acknowledging one of the big things that I've talked about for a long time, and that is the imperfection being the key, and that it is not through the lens of something considered to be perfection that you will find most likely what is what is valuable. It is through your imperfections and through the mistakes and learning and through the things that are considered to make us weak, like our flesh, that the Titans are wrong about. And they didn't put their faith in mortals. In fact, they tried to exterminate mortals. And the only reason why we've been able to fight back against these things and to break the bonds of fate is because we are mortal. And it's so important to have the 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 perspective of mortals because, like I've said before, a cosmos run with the cold calculations of those above is no cosmos that you want to live in. Trust me.